My name is Ishul Abdul Halin, and welcome to my video on the introduction to the 68K microprocessor. This video is the fifth part from a six-part series that aims to give you introductory knowledge about this topic. In this video, we will discuss how the 68K microprocessor executes programs that is stored in memory. Hopefully at the end of the series, you would have gained an understanding on what the 68K microprocessor is, how it works and how it is programmed. Here, we would like to explain how a program in memory is executed by the 68K microprocessor using an algorithm called the fetch and execute cycle. There are only two parts to this algorithm, as shown in the picture here. The first is the fetch cycle and is followed by the execute cycle, these two cycles are repeated during the course of program execution. During the fetch cycle, a read operation is initiated by the CPU. Basically, the CPU fetches an instruction from memory in the read operation. This is done in several steps. Initially, the program counter's value is put onto the address bus because its value is the address of the instruction in memory. Once the address bus is loaded with the program counter's value, this information is used to point to the address location of the instruction. The instruction is then put onto the data bus and sent to the instruction decoder, the program counter's value is then incremented by a certain amount. This amount is equal to the size of the instruction that the program counter is currently pointing to. The activities in the fetch cycle follows this very specific order. The decode operation in the execute cycle is then initiated by the 68K microprocessor. The instruction is then decoded by the instruction decoder and finally executed by the CPU. This concludes the first fetch execute cycle. The fetch cycle is initiated again to fetch the next instruction. This is followed by the next execute cycle. The fetch execute cycle is repeated until all of the instructions in the program have been executed by the 68K microprocessor. Let's look at an example. We are going to execute a six-line program stored in memory as shown in the table on the right. The program is stored in addresses 0 to 5. Address 6 to 8 just contains data presented in hexadecimal values, for simplicity, we will assume that one instruction is only one byte in size, thus requiring only one address to store. Note that real instructions are actually bigger than one byte. We are now showing labels for the program counter, instruction decoder and data register D0 because all of these registers are related to the fetch execute cycle in this example. Once program execution commences, the first address of the instruction is loaded into the program counter. Its value is 0. This value is put onto the address bus shown as the purple arrow here. It is pointing to address 0. Now, the data bus is loaded with the instruction load D0 with the data from address 7. This instruction is sent to the instruction decoder and the program counter's value is incremented to 1. This concludes the first fetch cycle. For the execute cycle, the instruction is decoded and by the instruction decoder. Then it is executed by the CPU by fetching the data at address 7, loading it onto the data bus and sending it to register D0. D0 now contains the value 70. This concludes the first execute cycle. The program counter's value is now 1. This value is put onto the address bus and now the program counter is pointing to address 1. The instruction add 5 to the contents of D0 is loaded into the instruction decoder and the program counter's value is incremented to 2. Now, the execute cycle is initiated. The instruction instructs the CPU to add 5 to the data in register D0, thus 70 plus 5 equals 75. The new value in D0 is 75. The third fetch execute cycle now starts with the program counter's value equals 2. This value is put onto the address bus and now the program counter is pointing to address 2. The instruction to store the data in register D0 to address 7 is sent to the instruction decoder through the data bus, the program counter's value is incremented to 3. 
The decoded instruction causes the CPU to locate address 7. The value 75 in D0 overwrites the value at address 7. This concludes the third fetch execute cycle. The fourth fetch execute cycle now starts with the program counters value equals 3. This value is put onto the address bus and now the program counter is pointing to address 3. The instruction to load the data at address 8 into D0 is sent to the instruction decoder through the data bus, the program counter's value is incremented to 4. The decoded instruction causes the CPU to locate address 8 and move its contents into register D0. The value in D0 is now 0. This concludes the fourth fetch execute cycle. The fifth fetch execute cycle now starts with the program counter's value equals 4. This value is put onto the address bus and now the program counter is pointing to address 4. The instruction to subtract 3 from the contents of D0 is sent to the instruction decoder through the data bus, the program counter's value is incremented to 5. The decoded instruction causes the CPU to subtract 3 from the data in D0. Thus, 0 minus 3 is executed. The value in D0 is now negative 3. This concludes the fifth fetch execute cycle. The last fetch execute cycle now starts with the program counter's value equals 5. This value is put onto the address bus and now the program counter is pointing to address 5. The instruction to end the program is sent to the instruction decoder through the data bus, the program counter's value is incremented to 6. The decoded instruction causes the CPU to end the program, this concludes the final fetch execute cycle. I hope that this simple example has given you an idea of how the fetch execute cycle is done by the 68K microprocessor. Thank you for your time and attention. Have a great day.